We're calming down from some mini solar storms that have hit us over the last couple days, and we have a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. What does this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. Space weather this week has gotten very exciting. We have two bright regions on the Earth-facing disk this week. One of them is Rogue Region 2734, and we call it a Rogue Region because it's showing some influence from Solar Cycle 25. And as such, it's been very active. You can see after this lunar eclipse right here, blammo, right there, did you see that? It fired off an Earth-directed solar storm, and then a day later, whammo, again, another Earth-directed solar storm. Now, granted, these were mini storms and they were pretty weak, but they did hit Earth over the last couple days and they brought Aurora clear down to Michigan in the United States and as far north as New Zealand. Now what's really cool is that we have another chance for a solar storm with this coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or so. So your Aurora photographers, wow, keep your batteries charged, especially at high latitudes. You guys could be in yet for another show. Now on top of that, we have a bright region that is rotating into Earth view right now. And well, it's not all that organized, so it probably won't keep the solar flux up high enough to stay in the, the 70s, but it will keep us at the high end of poor for radio propagation, which, you know, isn't too bad for solar minimum. But hey, at least it's something. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. We did have a couple C-class flares there on the 8th and on the 9th. This is from region 2734 when it fired those Earth-directed solar storms. But outside of that, the X-ray flux continues to remain very low and now we're back to a spotless sun and it looks like things are going to continue like this for the foreseeable future. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually hit storm levels was clear back at the beginning of the month. This was due to an extended uh, coronal hole that brought us some fast wind over a period of a few days. You can see we bumped up to storm levels multiple times, which was nice because it brought aurora down to mid-latitudes over many parts of the world. And since then, things have kind of settled down and we've kind of hovered between unsettled conditions and quiet conditions. Even these last little mini storms that we've gotten on the 12th and the 13th really aren't bumping us up past unsettled conditions, but this could change very easily as this fast wind hits us. We could bump up to active conditions. We even have a short chance for storm conditions. See your roar photographers, you need to stay on your toes. And even though the solar storms we've been having are pretty weak, considering we're basically in a solar minimum like sun, we still have managed to get some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world this month. Now, I don't have a chance to show nearly all the photos that I would love to show, but here are just a few, like this gorgeous aurora in Finland, and it was seen in Denmark. The aurora dropped to Norway, multiple places in Norway, and it was seen in Sweden. We saw it in Scotland and in Ireland. We saw it even in Shetland in the UK. And as we travel over the Atlantic, it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we travel over to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in Canada, all over Canada. It was seen in Yellowknife and in multiple places in Saskatchewan. It was seen in multiple places in Alberta and it even dropped to the United States. We saw it, of course, in Alaska, but we also saw it in Michigan. And as we go down under, it was seen in New Zealand. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A, it's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from, well, kind of from the side anymore instead of the backside. And what you can immediately see is all the activity on Stereo's west limb. That's the Earth-directed stuff that was fired back on the 8th and the 9th. But what you can also see is that bright region in Stereo's view. That region has actually been a bit flare-active. If you can see it, it launched several solar storms right along with it. So we are expecting to see a little bit of brightness from that. Hopefully that region's gonna be boosting the solar flux as it continues to enter 
Earth view, you can also see a finger-like coronal hole. That, re that coronal hole has also entered Earth view, and it looks like it could actually bring us yet another solar storm after the one we're about to have here in the next couple days. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that fast solar wind from that coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting active conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a major storm. At mid latitudes, well, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we have about a 10% chance of a minor storm. Now, because we've already had a little bit of rattling from these earlier solar storms, the conditions here could last over over a couple days, maybe even into the weekend, especially at high latitudes. But overall, this shouldn't be a very strong storm, and things shouldn't last, especially at mid-latitudes, things shouldn't last for very long. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares, so this should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. We have a spotless sun right now, so we have no risk for radio blackouts. However, we do have a couple bright regions on the Earth-facing disk, and that is boosting the solar flux just a little bit. We're going to hang on to the low 70s here for a couple more days before we begin to tank into the high 60s. That means radio propagation on Earth's day side will likely be poor as we move in through the weekend. And we're just going to have to hang on until some new regions uh, come into Earth view. Now also because we are at solar minimum, we have a higher cosmic ray impingement than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers, and this includes you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include you prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week has gotten very exciting. First, we had a couple bright regions, including rogue region 2734, that has shown some influence from the new solar cycle. And it's been active enough to even fire a few mini solar storms at us that brought aurora down to mid latitudes. And then on top of that, we have some fast wind that's going to be hitting Earth here in the next couple days. And that could bring yet more aurora. So you aurora photographers, make sure you keep your batteries charged. Now, on top of that, we have a bright region that is rotating into Earth view, and it's going to give the solar flux just a little bit of a boost. So amateur radio operators and you emergency responders, well, you guys are going to be hovering at the low end of marginal, maybe even the high end of poor here for the next, I don't know, maybe even two weeks until another bright region rotates into Earth view. So you're just going to have to deal with it. But maybe these low level solar storms will help boost that radio propagation on Earth's night side. But at least for you GPS users, well, both the day side and the night side are looking pretty good for you. So as long as you stay away from Aurora and away from those dawn dust terminators during the solar storm, your GPS reception should be pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.